Traveling the Vortex. We've joined Missy as she travels the vortex and arrive at episode 503. Record scratch! Nothing says stop everything like the sound of obsolete technology malfunctioning. I'm Keith. I'm Sean. And I'm Glenn. How are you guys? Pretty good. Although I not malfunctioning, much, I hope. I would do much better if my obsolete technology stopped malfunctioning. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of it at your place, so. I do have a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had to replace one of my uh, wireless mics this week. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's not good. This cord looks broken. Did <laughs> <laughs> you guys do anything fun or productive this week? Mel and I went and saw Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Mm. What would you think? It was a lot of fun. It, it, it uh, was a very satisfying sequel to that movie. It, uh, it managed to, in a different way, completely pull the standardized, oh, it's the second movie, our superhero has to lose their powers or go through a uh, crisis of self-conscience. Um, but th- did it in a unique way. And uh, you're right, everybody kind of stepped up to the same level of Tom Hardy. Um, although, you know, honestly, the first 40 minutes, just listening to him and Venom fight <laughs> all in his head, <laughs> uh, you could do a whole movie of that without a bad guy, without a plot, without just, <laughs> just, just let him go. You know, just like they're arguing over dishes. Okay. I'd watch that. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. Um, and then, yeah, the, the, the end was uh, pretty cool. And then the, 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 the stinger at the end of the end. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> sort of blew my mind. I didn't think they would go yeah. there, but I didn't either. <laughs> That's now all I'm we'll say. really curious. <laughs> That's all we'll say. I know that Keith's already been spoiled on it, but I don't want to, I know about I don't the stinger. Ru- I don't right. know about the end. Okay. I don't want to ruin anything with the, uh, yeah. I don't want to ruin anything for anybody. Post credit scene. Yeah. Uh, there's no post credits. That was a mid credit, I think. It was oh, okay. Well, well, whatever. Yeah, just the one. But what a one. Yeah. Wow. When you got one like that, that's all you need. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Uh, Keith, did you do anything this week? Not really. You got kids, so <laughs> they keep you busy yeah. enough, oh, right? We went to this, the, the Sunset Zoo in Manhattan and saw the albino wallaby. That was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Is it cute? It is cute. Like, well, kind of. As much as an albino creature can be cute. Kind of looks like a rat. <laughs> a giant rat that hops around. But, you know, the other baby wallaby was cute. And it's really not that Offer small suck it to hash. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> it's huge, actually. It's a pretty big <laughs> Considering it just emerged from the pouch, I don't know how it fit in the pouch. <laughs> Either that or it's grown a lot in like the two weeks since they posted a picture of it. We didn't do much this weekend. Uh, I finished watching Jessica Jones, so I'm finally getting caught up on my uh, all of my potentially, well, it was for a little while, potentially non-connected, <laughs> non, p- potentially non-canonical Marvel Universe, but I don't, I'm kind of changing my mind now. Um, Did that have three seasons or just two? That one had three. That one in Daredevil okay. had three. And then, I don't uh, think I got the season three. Luke Cage, um, Iron Fist, and The Punisher got two seasons each. That's right. It's pretty good. I I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I watched Daredevil just I don't know about a month ago. Finished season three of it, and so I uh, no I was, I was going to say I'm all caught up on the Netflix Marvel stuff, but that's not true because I have to finish uh, season two of The Punisher. And then the plan is to go uh, finish Runaways, which I got about, I think, a third of the way through the second se- season of Runaways, and it was just really not grabbing me. And so I I bailed on it. I'm trying to decide whether to go back and start season two again or just pick up where I left off. And then I've still got season two of uh, Cloak and Dagger to watch, and I've still got Hellstrom to watch. 
although all of them are very <laughs> very loosely connected so <laughs> but we'll see i mean i just i kind of want to have everything under my belt so not that it might matter later but it might matter later so <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, you guys. Oh, and then we're going through the uh, Disney Plus uh, series again with Holly, and and we're halfway through uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier now. So, oh, nice. Yeah. How's she dealing with it? She really liked WandaVision a lot. Um, she hasn't really said much about Falcon and Winter Soldier. She's not a big fan of the Winter Soldier character. She's never really liked him, and. I told her, I think going into this one, maybe you'll change your mind. She's not changed her mind yet, but we'll see. We'll see. She's not hating it by any means. In fact, she was the first one to say, let's watch it last night. So that's a, that's a plus with her. (laughs) That's a good sign. Right. Right. And then, uh, the other thing I did was we, I played, um, the newly released, uh, Doctor Who, the edge of reality, which released, uh, I think on Friday and it's on PlayStation, Xbox and steam now. And this is the one that's been a long time coming with David Tennant and Jody Whitaker. It was the 13th and 10th doctors. And I'm only a couple of levels in, but I'm really thoroughly enjoying it. It's, um, very immersive, uh, the idea is, well, when you start, this doesn't spoil anything because this is the very first scene, you're doing your laundry in a laundromat. You just, and you basically can go around and open dryers and just stuff like that. And then there's this weird like glitch, and then suddenly it's like this kind of post-apocalyptic uh, scene inside this laundry room. And the 13th Doctor pops up on a screen and starts telling you we need she need me to help this there's a reality virus that's been uh, let loose and you have to kind of help her uncover uh, the rea- what's what has caused this and she's can only communicate with you briefly at certain times and the the first level is really cool because you're going through um, a Dalek uh, invaded London and everything is just this really destroyed red. There's these Dalek ships going back and forth with spotlights on the ground and you have to avoid getting into the spotlight. Go through and you put together uh, basically a communication device to communicate with her. And then uh, the, the TARDIS materializes and you get in it and you're off. Hmm. Uh, it's kind of neat because there's a lot of it's a lot of puzzle based things. So you have to kind of find things, figure things out. Some things are obvious, some things aren't so obvious. In fact, uh, when I, I had to quit today because our power went out, uh, I was right in the middle of uh, this putting these making these lasers go the right direction, and it was driving me crazy. In fact, I, I was kind of grateful the power went out because I I really needed to take a break <laughs> from that anyway because it it was driving me nuts. I, I haven't got really hung up on anything except for that. Um, but the, uh, there's a lot of great puzzles. There's a lot of little Easter eggs. You'll find little pieces. I've, I've so far found, uh, the seventh doctor's umbrella, the fifth doctor's hat, Ace's bat. There's little things through that, like that peppered throughout the game. So try to, try to go everywhere and look at everything. Cause you'll, you'll find these kind of things and pick them up. And then you're picking up also, um, sheets for journal entries, but I haven't quite figured out what those are yet. So, but it's neat. I, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's very immersive. And, um, I highly suggest it's only 25 bucks, uh, which was surprising for, you know, a, a console game. And I think anybody that has console or a PC computer, I, I really think they should pick it up and give it a shot. So, so you're playing I, on Xbox? I'm playing on the Xbox. I've recorded a few clips and I think I'll probably put some of them together and put them up on our YouTube ch- channel so that uh, people can take a look, see what they think. How much was said game? Uh, $25. Why then? Yeah. I'm not sure how long it is for $25, but <laughs> it's that same group that did um, uh, the mobile game, too. I just Maze Theory, I think, is the, the group. Hmm. So, Anything else? And it is VR compatible if you have it is, VR, right? It is VR compatible, but, but you do not need VR in order to You don't to have to it. have it. Right. Usually, the, I think the VR games are a bit shorter, just because it's a lot more processing power. Yeah, that's true. All right, well, let's move on to some news. 
not much news this week, but just the trailer. The trailer was released. We finally got a look. Kind at of our season. first glimpse. What'd you guys think? Yay! Got me excited. <laughs> I think I read an article where they were surmising from this trailer that this is going to be sort of the Doctor Who uh, multiverse of madness is what uh, they were speculating. That it, and it appears that there's going to be some like really timey-wimey stuff that kind of is universe-breaking. And they, of course, speculated mm. that the reason for that might be so that they can kind of put things back together for RTD when he comes on board. But I don't, I don't know if I agree with that, but it does kind of look like, you know, with the, the, uh, lines, they, they, they're focused on the lines on that. They're similar to the ones on Jody's, um, jumper and they're at the end kind of like unraveling, which I thought was kind of a neat visual in that, uh, video in that, uh, trailer. See, I got the impression from the trailer that they were re raveling. They were like what? They were apart. They were apart and coming together. Did I? Am I remembering this part wrong? Um, it looked to me like aren't, they, aren't they like, they're they're re- unraveling like at the joining? end. Uh, well, maybe they are rejoining because they are on the end of it. And it looks like they're kind of coming back in, like unraveling in reverse. It could be. My initial gut reaction was that it was unraveling, um, which. On the one hand, if we're doing a big multiverse Doctor Who story, okay, that's kind of cool. But <laughs> have am, am I wrong? Haven't we had several different story arcs about how that's not the way this works in the Doctor Who universe? That you know, it's it's rare to see a parallel dimension that they don't normally deal with that, and it's it's very very oddball rules exceptions kind of times that it does happen like Pete's world or the antimatter universe or something along those lines. Yeah. They kind of, I, I think you're right. I mean, I just, I seem to remember that because, you know, obviously with, with a Marvel or, uh, you know, any, any of, of, of those kinds of things you can go, Oh, it's a, you know, it's a multiverse. And suddenly that explains away a whole multitude of sins. But I was fairly certain that doctor who had, never chose to pull the trigger on that particular plot point because they had said you can't do it. They've said you can't or, do or, it. <laughs> They've said you can't do a lot of things that Chibnall's, well, yeah, Chibnall's kind of gone and done. So <laughs> That's true, too. So I don't know. There's, there, there's a part of me that's very hopeful that that's what it is just because it would allow for that. <laughs> for as much as we complain about a reset button, I kind of feel like we need a reset button. Um <laughs> But uh, at at the same time, it's like, eh, (laughs) I don't know. I could go either way with it. It depends on how it works out. As much as I love Doctor Who, there's never really been, you know, on top of the trends as far as storytelling goes. You know, they've, 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 they've cut some foreground and cut a path in some aspects. But in other parts, they've always been kind of a little bit behind. Um, where <laughs> like Doctor like, Mysterio, se- yeah, like that sort of thing. It's always been several years behind the facts. So the fact that they might be trying to do a multiverse story when everyone else is doing multiverse stories doesn't seem likely to me. Mm-hmm. And just based off the trailer, I don't get that. And trying to extrapolate that out of the graphic of the rainbow coming apart or coming together whichever it is i just seems I just, like a huge stretch to I me just, <laughs> i just rewatched it and it's clearly coming apart <laughs> oh, okay yeah because it it as it's on the end on the left or on the right hand side which you would think was coming back together but if you look at it it's completely spreading apart as the uh as the camera pans to the right you could definitely tell that it's coming apart of course, one could also extrapolate from that that it's the doctor herself is coming apart. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think there's a lot you could read. Less, into that. less to be said about the universe. I mean, you can take anything from that sort of thing. Right. I, I think we're getting the return. A... Go ahead. No, no. I, I, I suppose it could also be that you know everybody who's saying you know whoever they are that they are speculating that this means this. 
is it possible that they are angry fanboys upset over the timeless child and are grasping at any straw to see it undone uh, uh that, that could be but I, th- I don't think the article i read was in either radio times or the metro and it it seemed like an author that was pretty in our writer that was pretty you know grounded and, and not a naysayer so i don't know what do you guys think of the uh, Santarin redesign? Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. It's actually not even yeah. a re- it's not even a redesign. It's a it's a it's a it's retro a... retro resi- uh, design. Yeah, I think that's great. I, I mean, I, I've don't get me wrong. I like the uh, design of the Santarins that we've gotten in the new series, but it'll be kind of it's kind of nice and interesting to see that. And I'm excited to find out if they address it even, you know, if they address why the designs are different. So I hope they do variations in the clone batch. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, and it makes sense that eventually or at some point there's been variations and the fact that they've looked so different every single time up until the new series for the most part. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like the change. I think that, uh, I saw Ood in there too. So that's kind of neat that we're getting the Ood again. And then, yeah. of course, we got, um, as they're calling it, Dollar Store Chewbacca, too. So, <laughs> And the Weeping Angels, we saw. Oh, we did. Yeah, them. we saw Angels. And Cybermen. East favorite. And I think, based off the Cybermen showing up, I think the other ones, I'm trying to look up the name because I can't remember off the top of their head, my head. Um, The crystal people that were talking to her. I think we're going to see a return of the Telos race. Oh, that's my that's my prediction. Okay. They're the crystal Telosian yeah. people that right. were in Attack of the Sun. Right, right. Huh. Yeah. Putting it on that record now. That might be. Cool stuff. I'm excited. It's it, it's almost here. We've only got a couple more weeks out, so. Yeah. We're getting there. I've forgotten how chaotic this time of year is, where it's the run up to the new show and we finally have a date and I kind of figured we'd be milking that best bit of news for you know a couple of weeks um, but no we're being inundated with okay now that we've given you that here's this here's this here's this and this and it's kind of like oh yeah they do do it this way don't they it's like you can't keep up with the news in the three weeks before Doctor Who comes back because there's just so much news yeah yeah even the news that um Chibnall wrote all the episode except for one which he co-wrote. Which makes sense doing a six-part story. Yeah, and but I wonder how much of that had to do with COVID too. I mean, because they, yeah. they were putting all this stuff together in 2020. And so he probably didn't have a lot of contact with writers or opportunities. So I'm hoping it will kind of help the story and his show running in general because Broadchurch was so well done and he wrote every single episode. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm wondering if he's the sort of writer that or showrunner that just needs to write everything. Yeah. So it all fits cohesively together without too much dispersion. Maybe so. I'm hopeful that that means that we'll get, you know, something more on par with the children of earth uh, cohesiveness than a miracle day. Um, <laughs> not to pick on Torchwood, right? Right? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> That's a fair. No, the short, the shorter fair, run is also a good assessment. indication. <laughs> yeah. Now, technically, this marks the first six-parter for Doctor Who since, well, the classic series. So we'd have to go all the way back to uh, what Invasion of Time. Yeah, I think that we're. I think they're overselling that six-parter thing. I think that this season probably will be more of a continuation than we've had in in series in the past. But I really think each episode is still going to sort of be centered around around one topic that'll kind of work into the next so i hesitate to say this is like a typical six-parter i think it's a it's a six-part story but i i would hate to liken it to something that we've had in the past where it's an actual like a six-part story where you have to have all six parts to get the entire story this one you have to do that too don't get me wrong but 
each I think each one of these will still be a little bit uh, yeah, start and resolve, start and resolve, but have a continuing uh, story arc that's a little more weaved in than it has been in the past. So, so probably closer thought. to a closer to a bad wolf. Yeah, closer to a bad bird wolf bird. than a, than, I, I would, than American I would expect it, Yeah, well, and I would expect it to be a bit more, even a bit more involved than Bad Wolf. Yeah, like the what well, the episode itself would be the B plot, and each episode is its own B plot instead of having a B plot that runs throughout the whole season. Yeah, somewhere between uh, somewhere between Bad Wolf and Children uh, Children of Earth. Gotcha. But you're right. If if it if it is in fact a six part story, although they the episodes are all they have episode titles, right? Although that I have not seen them. That didn't stop them in the uh, very early sixties, I guess. That's <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anything else on the trailer that you guys want to chat about? Was there anything else in there that jumped out at anybody? I think, uh, uh, is it John Bishop? Is that the guy that's the other uh, companion? I, I actually just seen the few scenes that he's in. It, he seems like he might be a lot of fun. So be interesting. Yeah, he had a nice quippy line there. Yeah. He had a couple of them, actually. Yeah. All right. Well, should we move on to this week's review? We're doing part two of the Missy uh, Series 1 box set, starting with... The first one, The Broken Clock. Tonight on Dick Zodiac's America's Most Impossible Killers, Detective Joe Linwood hunts the most impossible killer of his career. There's a trail of bodies, impossible bodies, and Joe has one long night to solve the case. Luckily, D.I. Missy Masters from Scotland Yard in England... London, England is here to help. Bum bum bum. <laughs> Go ahead and start, Sean. Um, when this started, I I, I was quite excited, and and oh, you're going to do kind of an unsolved mysteries, you know? I I I thought that was clever. And then about a third of the way, maybe not even that long into it, I began to get annoyed with the particular type of storytelling and how the the uh, over-dramatization of the Unsolved Mysteries portion of it was going. Then they began throwing curveballs, uh, as, as Missy's want to do, with suddenly everybody's self-aware that they are in this thing or at least our detective is. And it, it kind of fell into a, where are you going with this? Like I, I it, it just, it just threw me really, really bad. Um, and ultimately I just kind of decided, you know, just shut up, let it go and enjoy the ride. And they'll explain it at the end or they won't. And then you can talk about it. And, they, I think, for the most part, kind of satisfactorily explained what was going on. I thought the uh, the twist with who exactly the pointy bearded gentleman was was that was quite cool. Didn't see that coming at all. Yeah. And um, once we got to the end reveal of it being kind of a loop situation for the detective, that was satisfactory enough to explain away the most of how this wasn't working for him. Hmm. I don't know that it explained enough of it away. And I, I'm, I'm torn on this because I want to applaud it for taking a different approach to the storytelling, but I don't know that that approach worked, if that makes sense. Hmm. But I did enjoy the story enough to kind of let it go and be like, eh, all right, you know, it's, I, 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 I give it a pass because I had fun. Uh, I had kind of the same reaction. I was not really enjoying the the way it was structured and the way they were presenting it until Missy came along. And then once, once Missy got there, I, I was a little bit more, okay, things are, they're doing a, a bit more tongue in cheek than I thought they were originally. So I started letting a lot more of it slide mm-hmm. and I, I wound up enjoying the story for the most part, not as much as I did the first two, uh, in the box set. Mostly partially, I think because 
of the format of the storytelling they were trying to do. And I, I do applaud them for doing something different and something unique, which I'm not aware of Big Finish doing in the past. And it's very um, of the moment, uh, <laughs> unlike Doctor Who normally, uh, Big Finish usually does keep their finger on the pulse a little bit more. And all the criminal podcasts that have been coming out and all that sort of stuff, really, this really lends to to that sort of uh, kind of mocking of that storytelling uh, format. But overall, I'm not sure the wrap up and the resolution really kind of was supported by the structure. I don't, I don't feel like I, I got enough quite out of the story and as good of understanding as I could have, if it were a traditional tale. Huh? I, I liked it. I, I, I kind of would echo what some of the things you guys are saying, although I think that what was most frustrating about it is the fact that we had two very strong, two very good stories. And this one, I just didn't feel like I was enjoying it for most of the same reasons you guys were saying. For It felt like it was a little over the top. Uh, it felt like it was kind of driving that yeah, narrative until until it... Um, you know, re- tell the Missy reveal, and, and she kind of takes over the narrative, um, which I thought was a neat twist, as you guys were saying as well. Uh, I'm with you, Keith. I, I felt that the I appreciated the, the effort for how they were doing it, and it was very topical, uh, making fun of, of the... Um, th- making fun of these, you know, crime podcasts and crime uh, TV series that are really popular. Um, I think that the for me the ending of it and the reveal maybe made the ride worth it for me because I did I liked the end I liked the reveal of the fact that this was her well yeah it was her TARDIS um, I liked the idea of her having to trick pilots into you know uh, uh, flying the, the TARDIS for her because because she couldn't. Um, so I, I thought that the end, the end of it really made the, the ride a little more enjoyable. So when I got done in hindsight, I thought, okay, well, it, it, it was worth it to get there. But unfortunately, it was just worth it to get there for me. I, I think it could have been a much stronger story. And um, I think that the, the, the device was, was clever, but just not enough for me to go, oh, yeah, that was really good. So I think I just also wanted more of, you know, exploration of, Mark and the the fact that her sent her TARDIS was so advanced and saw such horrific things it became sentient and her trying to convince him to let her drive it again I want that part once that once that revelation happened I was like okay yes but then there wasn't enough of that yeah. to help me get over the ride I had to go through to get there yeah 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 I would agree and I there's a a lingering fanboy question over, well, aren't all Tardises, Tardises, uh, sentient? I mean, they're, they're all telepathically linked to their pilots. We've certainly seen that the doctor's Tardis has a mind of its own. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. just maybe not quite as directly, um, applied, but, um, Again, uh, you know, I can let that go because it's a cool idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then um, I agree, Keith. It just it, 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 more of exploring that story and less of the, the the detective. But then if you cut back the detective, you lose the look at the nifty unsolved mystery framework that we've set up. So it it, it it's it kind of it, it reminded me a little bit of one of the uh, found footage stories where. It's a nifty gimmick, but the only reason to do it is because of this gimmick. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? I mean, you know, you don't have to tell this story in that manner. You could have told it as a straight lace, just boom. You could have done it as a, a, a noir, hard-boiled detective story. And that, I think, would have worked, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, the fact that they chose to do it in this manner, it's like, okay, that's cool. That's different. We've not heard that before, whereas we have heard, you know, the, the noir stuff. But then... It's you, you still have to make it work for me. Mm-hmm. If you're going to tell me the story, I need to be able to believe that there's a, a, a better rationale for how this fits. Especially, I mean, again, if you don't make them sentient, 
okay, then then that leaves out that portion of it that I have a problem with. Yeah. Uh, and you're you're telling the story in this way. If you're going to make them sentient, you got to have a good a good uh, reason for it. And I, I feel like it has to play into the the narrative mm -hmm. of the narration. And you know, as it was, well, who was narrating it? Because the, you know the narrator is uh, omniscient and he knows all, and he he's giving all this information. And then he is proven to be a construct of the of the cop's mind and he disappears at that point. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So how does that work within the comp? I mean, I guess maybe it still works because the cop is, but that's not his future self. So he's not aware of it. I don't know. There's, there's just a lot of question marks that, that raises that don't quite gel for me. Right. Right. And the other thing that, uh, you know, I, I sound like I'm nitpicking. I did enjoy the story. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that I, I think both of these stories commit the cardinal sin of is, hey, we've got this great, you know, uh, story about Missy. Okay, where is she? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. both of these focus a lot on the guest cast, on the newcomers, on the, the you know, and, and especially the next one. Missy's very much relegated to the background of that one. And it's it's just like, when you have a, a, a sheer force of personality like her and you have an actress who as is phenomenal as Michelle Williams is to go over the top and play this character, you give them the spotlight and the microphone and back away mm -hmm. and just let them go. Mm -hmm. And I feel like both of the, you know, we got that a lot in the first two and we didn't so much in, in these. So there's definitely a falling off. Like I said, I still enjoyed the story. I still had fun with it, but there were some problems. Yeah. I do have to say the guy who did the voice of Mark did a very good Delgado. Oh, he did. And it was almost a mix of Delgado and Ainsley at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it was very cleverly done with how, well, he's in this glass box. So he's coming through all muffled and everything. And it was just enough of a hint that, yeah. oh, well, that's who this is. But then they pulled the rug out from under us on that, and you know, we got the other part of the reveal where he's actually the avatar of this TARDIS, and then you hear him inside, and it's like, oh, no, he's just, he's really that kind of good. That's very cool. Yeah. I appreciated that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's move on to the next one. The Belly of the Beast. Missy's scheme nears completion. All she must do is subjugate one little planet and bend the, the inhabitants to her will. Not too much to ask. But slaves will keep rebelling. It's almost as if they don't want to unearth an ancient artifact to fulfill Mil Missy's plans for universal domination. She'll have to do something about that. <laughs> uh oh, I can't Not do it. I, I, oh. I, 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 yeah, this was to me the weakest story of all of them. Um, I'll start it. <laughs> I think that what where this one falls down, and 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 John touched a little bit on this in the review of the of the broken clock, that Missy is for this being Missy's box set, and this being the finale of this box set, she's sorely underused, and yeah. in all of the other stories prior, even to a point, the broken clock, you're sort of. I mean, I don't think we're meant to root for Missy, but we she at least it becomes a sympathetic character for us in 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 certain in a, in, a, in a certain light or in a certain way of looking at it. And I feel like all of the other stories kind of did that where I was at times rooting for Missy going, OK, I, I see what you're doing here. I, I'm, I'm OK with this, you know, even though you're the bad guy, you've been the bad guy in Doctor Who. Um and I think that the soft sell on that always goes to that redemption year when she was, you know, trying to be good. Um, yeah. But this one, it's, I don't like the idea of Missy. I, I, I like that Missy has a goal. She has an ultimate, I'm going, and maybe this was to remind us, hey, by the way, this is still the master. But I, I didn't like the playing chess with these characters in the flippant uh regard disregard to the fact that they you know they have these memories and she's she's just she's playing god in this one and it, it's really kind of a turn off and i 
I never get the the other thing is you have to look at this is if this story had made me sympathetic for its heroes, if it had given me something to appreciate them for, but it was it was so random and sporadic and it wasn't it didn't feel it didn't follow a you you weren't exactly sure what was going on which was the point of that was so that we had the big reveal that well they've they're clones they've been it's you know over and over again for them they've they've been giving these memories but um i just yeah it it it, it kind of falls flat for me after three pretty decent well two really good stories one decent one and then to, to end the box set with this. Now, the end of it, I, I like the fact that we did this big uh, cliffhanger ending, knowing that we're going into, you know, a, another box set. And, you know, hindsight's 2020. Now we're, we've got their four box sets total. So we know this is going to go on. Um, I don't know that I'd want every box set to cliffhanger like this one did. But um, it, it it's not outside of Missy's M.O., anything she does in this is just it leaves a sour taste in my mouth because you've you've given me a a reason to like missy until this story and i just i kind of felt like it was the weaker of the three of the four i think those are all very good points um i wasn't as thrilled with the the cliffhanger because once it finally revealed in the last two minutes what she's been doing this almost whole box set of why she got the the part from the monks TARDIS and why she it, it, it seemed pretty clear to me why she wanted her old TARDIS back I mean mm-hmm. yeah why wouldn't she right. but then to the, tie it all together of oh I've now got the master TARDIS ha 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 well that's kind of a cool cliffhanger it's like okay well that's really cool I waited through all of this to get to that and now I want more of that yeah. so it left me a little frustrated because the story wasn't so good wasn't as good as I would hope leading up to something that could potentially be really interesting. That being said, this story, I think it comes, what I liked about it, I think comes down to the production of it because it very much feels like a classic Doctor Who story, even down to the music has a lot of classic Who aspects to it that I really appreciated. That's my biggest yeah, that that part was great. <laughs> because the rest of it, as you pointed out, Glenn, is kind of uh, you, you got these characters that aren't really that likable, and it's pretty I, to me it was pretty clear early on that oh, well, once once the reveal happens, once what's her face wakes up the first time, that oh, they're clones, and that's they're all clones, and it there wasn't a lot of other oh wow reveals that happened for me other than the fact that they were inside a giant creature Uh, okay that's that's okay but not really too shocking i guess i don't know just the whole thing just kind of laid there and wasn't that impressive there's something other than the production level there's something early on too that gives that whole Inside the Belly of the Beast. I mean, besides the title, now that I think about it, but um, <laughs> <laughs> there's something early on that gives gives away or gives you too maybe heavy handed of a clue that they're inside some sort of creature that they're mining inside some sort of creature, and so I felt like when they feel like they're giving you this big aha moment, I thought, well, I kind of suspected that based on a line you dropped earlier, so that's not even a big aha moment. So, yeah. Yeah, I for me this one this one fell down under the underuse of Missy. It fell down under the predictability factor um, that I, I wasn't as astonished at the aha moments um, as I felt like maybe I should have been. And and, and I'm not going to say that I had it figured out exactly, but then when it was kind of like, oh, okay, well that makes sense. You know, it just. It, it, it wasn't a shocking, what? It wasn't the Master TARDIS reveal. And then it falls down on the Master TARDIS reveal because <laughs> it's like, oh, so we're kind of borrowing from Harry Potter now. Okay. I mean, you're going to assemble all these pieces into a super weapon. Yeah. I don't 
know that we've ever heard TARDISes work that way, but I suppose it's possible. Oh, and that's the cliffhanger and you're ended. Uh, well, I guess maybe we'll get more of that later, I hope. It, it, I, it, it felt tacked on almost. Sure. Like, yeah. they, I, I'm, I'm assuming that they knew this is the thrust of this box set, that this is where we were going with it, and we were going to pepper a little bit of it in each story. Um, unfortunately, it felt like Jonathan Morris got the, okay, and then you wrap it up. <laughs> Tie them all together somehow. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, what, 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 do you, what do you mean wrap it all up? Well, we've done this, this, and this. You, you fix it. Oh, okay. I mean, it just kind of felt like it was that kind of tacked on. Sure, yeah. Um, I did not like any of the characters. I normally in a, uh, in a rebellion, uh, you know, situation where we've got our slave labor, you, you, you have to have a couple of people that, uh, are sick and destitute and not going to make it. Maybe you off one or two of them from the guards to really illustrate how bad the bad guys are. And then you've got the plucky heroes that are supposed to rise up and rally everybody around them. And these guys were all just a bunch of complainers. Yeah. <laughs> I, all of them were, were yeah. pretty much cut from the same point. And, and I mean, don't get me wrong. If, if the aliens came down and enslaved the planet and stuck me in a mine, I'd be the complainer, <laughs> but you can't all be the complainer. <laughs> one, one person gets that job and everybody else has to do something different. <laughs> and then, Ooh, so when this very much not Mexican housekeeper showed up in the last story, I really wanted to laugh along and go, wow, that's the worst impression ever. And it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's Missy doing this disguise. And it's, and as soon as they, you know, the giant hump and the, it's like, oh, okay. It's Missy in disguise. You know, <laughs> we got a rubber mask. Cool. Mm -hmm. But then she starts to talk and it's like, ah, I, I, hmm, I don't know how I feel about this because not only was it bad intentionally, but it was stereotypical and it kind of wove between stereotypical Mexican stereotypical. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure she was French at one point, I, you know, it just, it just kind of covered the gambit to really illustrate how bad this accent was. Um, but I, I, I don't think it worked. I think instead it comes across as insensitive and in very poor taste. So then to resurrect that particular accent as another joke in the next one kind of became like, Mm, I don't. Know. I didn't think the accent was the same. I just thought it was a different bad. This one almost sounded German. I'm with I'm with Keith. I th the the first time that she does it, it doesn't sound Mexican at all to me in the in the first story. And it in fact it sounds like she's doing a really bad Asian mexican french yeah. and german accent like all together it's like she can't land on it and then she calls it out as her mexican accent and this time i felt sort of the same way that she wasn't quite making fun of any one accent she was blending a lot of different ones to emphasize the fact that she's not good with that as with accents she can't you know as as much of a master of disguise as the master is she can't she can't do an accent to, to save her life so i was actually okay with it i also was okay with her calling it mexican although she's not mexican but her father is from montserrat in the caribbean which so she's you know latin american descendants and so i think sometimes it's a little more forgiving if you're doing it of your own race or your own but uh, then again, if you're going to do that, why do it so comical? So I don't know. I was a little more forgiving. I can see where you're coming from, Sean, but yeah, and like I said, maybe I'm being completely, um, too wound up about it. It, you know, I, I, I'm freely willing to admit, especially in light of the fact that, you know, she, illustrating that she's bad with accents and putting the, I mean, she, th this is worse than, than Brad Pitt's Italian accent and, uh, in glorious bastards. I mean, it's that <laughs> level of, yeah. of hokey. And when you, you know, you laugh at that one, but uh, there, I don't know, there was just something about it that just struck me as insensitive. And, and once I had that thought in my head, then I, I couldn't get past that to, to any of the rest of it. So my, sure. I'd, I'd be curious to know if anybody else felt that way because it, I don't know what it was. It just 
something about it rubbed me the wrong way. Sure. And it kind of soured me on the whole thing on with that. But, um, you know, beyond that, it was an okay story. Just kind of, uh, you know, I, I agree with Keith. I think, uh, the, you know, it definitely had the, the classic who feels. Um, I think <laughs> it's odd to say this, but uh, apparently if you were ever uh, captured and driven into a slave labor force in the Doctor Who universe, you definitely want to push to be on a Dalek mining squad versus a master mining squad <laughs> uh because the daleks at least would allow you to take breaks right and you know <laughs> yeah the, the, you you know where you stand you're completely disposable and at the end of this project you're going to be killed but yeah. at least you get breaks during the uh during the construction phase of it versus the project as opposed to you can die in the middle of it right yeah right. exactly although i suppose if the daleks were employing clone labor they might have treated them the same way knowing that they just can start again you know it's funny in a way that's something else that rubbed me wrong about this is I, the master i mean don't get me wrong the master is he's the bad guy and in this case missy is the bad guy i get that but because we've had this kind of light sympathetic almost feel to these stories and you are kind of rooting for her you know you want to give her a pass and yes, I know historically, when you look at all the mad schemes and mad plots, the master has killed lots of people. Uh, we, we've enslaved people. We've, uh, you know, brought down airplanes. And I mean, there, there's been some trauma. Mm -hmm. And uh, many attempts at world domination, including, you know, the, let's turn everybody into the master. Which, which still, I think, ranks up there among the most nutty and insane schemes that <laughs> ever. I kind of love it. But um, subjugating an entire race of clones and just using them to exhaustion, killing them off, and then repopping them out. I don't know. That seemed almost above and beyond cruel. <laughs> <laughs> like... Oh, now you've crossed a line. I don't know why that's the line. <laughs> I really don't. I think, you know, I think all of a sudden you've got Missy kicking puppies and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> it's just... You know, but had they led with this in uh, Capaldi's first season, I don't remember which season it is, but if they, if they, if, if this would have been her in that season, we would have been all, oh yeah, absolutely. This is, this is, you know, calculating and cal callous master. Missy. Yeah. And so it would have, we'd have been okay with it. But what they did is after the last season for Capaldi where they're, she's on a redemption trip. And then the first, at least two stories of this, we're supposed to have, you know, we have some th sympathy for the character. It's, you know, it, it's really a left turn for you. I think maybe you're right. Maybe that's exactly what it is, is that I, I that Missy has two different modes. She's got the, cold calculating yeah of course she's going to be evil mode and then she's got this um almost more playful and mischievous mm. uh than than destructive yeah but um this this one felt more destructive <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work for me <laughs> well i think the fact that she's behind the scenes manipulating things as opposed to being front and center and you know Putting the charm over the horrific deeds makes a difference too. Yeah, certainly true. Yeah, yeah, that could be. She still killed plenty of people in this whole box set. I oh, mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Especially the last story. Well, did she though? <laughs> those those were all Mark. Well, yeah, but she, you know. I mean, I guess we don't know. To their death. We, we don't know what was happening on the the missions that you know somebody else was doing the piloting. Right. Yeah. So. All right. Well, Sean, what do we got coming up on the schedule? Well, coming up on the schedule, if you've not had enough Missy, you get uh, a little bit more next week. We'll be back with uh, the uh, Titan Comics uh, Missy number four. Uh, in uh, that uh, run, so the last one of uh, 
that compilation. There's four, uh, four issues in that. I can't talk all of a sudden. <laughs> and then uh, a, a warm-up for the return of the 13th Doctor, as we'll do uh, Titan Comics uh, 13th Doctor Volume 3, which collects issues 9 through 12 of their first season. And so some comic book goodness for you next week before we delve into uh, the, the season 13 proper, uh, which we, of course, will then be on on new who schedule for uh, the next six weeks. Yeah. And beyond that, well, you know, stuff. <laughs> stuff and things. Stuff and things. <laughs> things and stuff. All right. Well, of course, you can follow updates on TravelingTheVortex.com get any value out of this podcast why not consider putting some value back into it you can do that by clicking on our patreon link on the website consider supporting us there and thank you to those who already do also please consider giving us a five-star review wherever you subscribe to this podcast and make sure you join in the conversation on our listeners forum on facebook anything else before we close this one guys if not until next time i'm glenn i'm sean i'm keith cheers Good night, everybody. Be seeing you. Thanks for listening. You have been listening to Traveling the Vortex. Doctor Who and all of its associated programs are owned and trademarked by the BBC. No infringement is intended or implied.